Hello, everyone. Have you ever heard a goal without a plan? It's just a wish. Odds are not only have you heard this, but you have in one way or another experienced this, as have I, for sure. Here is the nutrition coach confession. I struggle with my nutrition, and the reason is not that I don't know what to do, but because I fail to plan. And this happens very frequently for myself. So, hello, Jana and Mike here. And welcome to our last talk for the challenge. And we're gonna discuss five easy steps to meal prepping like a pro. Or in other words, five easy steps to turn that wish into a goal with the right plan. Yep, yep, I am the same, same. If I don't uh, meal prep for the week, it never goes according mm -hmm. to plan. So yeah, so, but it just brings us back down to our foundational tagline here at uh, ECN. Uh, we believe something as fundamental as nutrition should absolutely not be complicated because nutrition is the foundation to absolutely everything that we do in life, right? And the foundation to our nutrition is having a good plan. So uh, our nutrition program is backed by Healthy Steps Nutrition, and it's helped over 30,000 people all around the world. And that's why we decided to partner up with them. It's helped them take control of their health and as you can see, these are just some of the incredible stories. Um, hopefully one of you guys will be the next story, right? So for many of these 30,000 individuals, their journey started with a real crucial foundational habit. And you guessed it, it's meal prepping. So prepping. yay, right? While we know it is simple, <laughs> it's far from easy. So just like these people, we're going to make sure that you find your foundation one step at a time. And I will say, even just implementing one of the basic um, tips that we gave you, like cutting and preparing your veggies or your produce after you go to the store. When I did that last week, I was a lot more ready to go with having veggie options on um, at work than just going and being without any healthy options. Um, so I can already say implementing certain little tips like that has helped me. All right. So I wanna say, let's circle back to my confession. As I stated, I knew the right foods to eat, but I wasn't always making it easy to make the right choice. Have you ever had a long day at work or running errands and the last thing you want to do is figure out what's for dinner? Because I've definitely been there. Or have you ever gotten home and realized you did remember to defrost the meat? I have also done that too. Or you just skipped on making a vegetable to make it a little easier and have one last thing to chop. So the answer for me is yes, yes, and yes. Um, this leads us to an easy mindset shift of let me just order some food or I'll just eat the bag of chips instead. Maybe those cookies staring at me in the pantry or that frozen pizza I know I bought when I was hungry. Right. You know what? It's just easy and convenient. And I definitely fall into that trap sometimes. Yeah, I've been there. And if you guys have been there, you're in for a treat. This nutrition talk is for you. So meal prepping for success is definitely a must for our health and wellness goals, right? So in fact, a study published by the International Journal of Behavioral Nutrition and Physical Activity, that's a mouthful, uh, back in 2017, found that meal planning is associated with some really great benefits, such as having higher overall food variety and quality, all these things that we care about, right? So more specifically, it is associated with lower odds of being overweight and obese, um, for men and women. So if that is important to you, let's dive into the five easy steps. Jenna, what's step number one? Step number one, pick three staple recipes that look good to you. Not ones that you're just going to let kind of sit on your shelf, but recipes that you're actually going to physically use, like find some ones you like and not a whole ton of them, but at least three that you can use. Yeah. 
Yeah. So, so step one requires just a tad bit of research, but shoot, that could be the fun part. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you had planned and prepped one breakfast or two meals and you had a focus on protein and one starchy side dish. So not only do you have some tasty foods to look forward to, but it will be easier on those busy days when you just don't have enough energy to plan out a meal. So front loading some work will make your future self very, very happy. Mm -hmm. And if you aren't sure where to start, check out our amazing recipes on our website, already broken down into th the categories for you. Uh, let's look at a few of our favorite recipes we have. We have Amish oatmeal. It's so easy to make and it's always a fan favorite. Add your favorite nuts or seeds, fruit, and add some milk to enjoy. I usually add, um, yeah, dried fruit and nuts or even peanut butter. I love doing oatmeal and adding extra in because I need that little bit of extra to help fill me up. Um, I added a little uh, almond, it's not almond, uh, vanilla flavored almond milk. We get it. Ooh, close, yeah. Yeah, it's That's just, the, the Amish oatmeal is amazing. Oh, also I have there's some uh, soy uh, silk milk that is 20 grams of protein as well added in. And I love using that too with um, whether it's the smoothies or oatmeal. Um, if you love eggs, you can try the egg muffins. Um, one of my clients loves those. He uses those like every day. And it's a great go to breakfast for those rushed in the morning. And it's a good place to get just a little bit of veggies in. Sneak in the veggies. Mm-hmm. And who says you can't enjoy sweets without eating healthy? I have a giant sweet tooth. It like is never satisfied. So if you are a fellow chocolate lover, as I am, you have to try the double chocolate overnight oats. The yogurt gives it a smooth consistency and you don't normally expect that from the oatmeal. Awesome. I haven't tried that one yet. Yeah. So next we want you guys to choose two proteins, okay? So let's face it, protein is usually the biggest barrier when it comes to mealtime. Mm -hmm. Of course, it takes the longest to cook. And if you got frozen, you got to add extra defrost time. And if you don't do that, forget about it, right? So having your proteins already pre-chosen and made will make it much easier to make the right choices. So if you have healthy options that became that are just as convenient, as those processed or fast foods, what are you gonna choose, right? So try the HSN pulled chicken. You just throw it in the crock pot um, or my personal favorite, I have these, uh, at least have these on hand at all times is the meatloaf muffins. They make for a great easy lunch and they're packed with protein and veggies. And, and if you're super hungry, you just, you can, you can add on another meatloaf muffin pretty much guilt-free. Delicious. So lastly, that starchy side dish, this tends to be my um, favorite or fan's favorite as part of the meal. Some of the to-go to starches include sweet potato, brown rice, quinoa, or a whole grain pasta. For me personally, I'm all about the sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes for the win. Yeah. Yeah. Like I do like rice and I have started trying out the rice cauliflower, the cauliflower rice. And I like that as well. Um, but I just, I don't know. Sweet potatoes has natural, um, well, sweetness to them that just rounds out a meal very nicely. And it's for me, a great texture. Fantastic. So as you start to pick out your recipes, remember to take inventory of the tools you have. One mistake we see is not being so efficient with your time because you are constantly waiting for one dish to finish before starting the next. For example, if you only have one crock pot, you won't pick out two crock pot meals to make. Obviously just not gonna work, but sometimes when we're busy and we're just trying to get stuff done, we just don't think about the simple stuff. So, you know, just take a minute, calm down and think through those little steps. Imagine if you had the HSN crock pot chicken going, the egg muffins or Amish oatmeal in the oven, one dish on the stove, like uh, the egg roll in a bowl. That's amazing. Overnight, yeah. Egg roll in a bowl. I mean, I've been wanting to try that one. Now I definitely have to try it. Yeah. And then at the same time, as you're doing all that, you also have overnight oats in the fridge. 
not only will you have a full fridge of meals for the week, but you will have done this all at the same time efficiently rather than taking all day to prep. I would say for myself, I also would then need to make sure I have plenty of timers going or I'll forget about one thing and not the other, but I also like being efficient with my time. So being able to do all those things on separate devices would be amazing. Kill, you know, two, three, four boards with one stone. Um, and the favorite top tools for the kitchen include a large mixing bowl, a crock pot, an air fryer. We use our air fryer all the time, muffin tin, and roasting pans. Do you have a favorite equipment, Mike? Um, as silly as this sounds, it might be the large mixing bowl. Um, we have this big giant plastic bowl and it broke a couple of weeks ago. So we had to get a new one, but it was like, if you have a bowl, that's too small mixing all this stuff it, it's irritating because it spills over so the large mixing bowl and then the air fryer easy number two but as far as muffin tins i i was telling you the other day i just bought some silicone oh, yeah. muffin tins and they're like soft and rubbery and you just push the thing up fantastic expensive but uh to me it's worth totally it. worth it super easy mm -hmm. to clean up yeah so i i like all my tools i like all my tools so step number two, we're going to plan our staples, right? Snacks and veggies. These are mm -hmm. huge, huge, right? So once you have a few recipes made, what uh, we can then pair these veggie staples with the complete meal, right? Should have veggies on the side and add them in. Um, maybe you're not a big fan of roasted broccoli at dinner, but uh, maybe some carrots with bell peppers or hummus at lunch with the meatloaf muffins. I don't know, you can make a bazillion different, different combinations if they are ready. Yeah, and I think that's the main thing. If you have multiple options, you're more likely to use them and choose to eat healthy than if you just have one thing. You're like, I ate that yesterday and ate that for lunch. I don't wanna eat it again for dinner. So if you prep yourself a couple things, it'll stay more likely to stay on track. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Okay. Balanced and healthy snacks are, are definitely easy to forget about as we just mindlessly grab the processed snacks in the pantry. So hopefully you clean your pantry out and they're not even in there. But uh, instead, plan out some fruits like apples or bananas with your favorite nut seed butter or maybe grapes with a handful of uh, almonds on the side, right? Again, having the options already easy to grab is going to help you choose more of those helpful food options throughout your day. What if you got a busy day on the go, right? Be sure to have the snacks ready for that too. A few great examples are low sugar Greek yogurts, RX bars or perfect bars, turkey jerky with fruit, or simply deli meat rolled up with avocado and green peppers. Um, we should treat our snacks like mini meals, meaning they should be balanced with carbs, healthy fats, and protein at the same time, right? Yeah, and like I, I'm on a little trip, and so I knew I wouldn't be eating as healthy, but I did bring like some little packets of veggies that are ready to go, and carrots, and hummus, and that way I know like I have some veggies and good snacks that I'm getting in on the side and maybe some more decadent meals I don't normally have and some nuts with uh, dried fruit. That's another favorite go-to for me. Yeah, awesome. So step number three, do an inventory in your pantry and your refrigerator. So tell us a little bit more about mm -hmm. that, Jenna. So have you ever gotten so excited about a meal and then you realize that you're missing just that one ingredient? Or worse, have you ever gotten home from shopping to find you forgot the one thing which you were just um, out for? I've done that, which is how can you do it? But yeah. you know, it happens to the best. That happens. Mm -hmm. This can be so frustrating and cause you to lose your motivation and choose just something that's more convenient and processed just because you give up. And one easy way to avoid it, this is by doing an inventory of what you have and what you will need for this week using those staples you already picked out. So that's yeah. Great. yeah, so once you have all this, you can create a grocery list, right? And we all, we all do this, right? This is so simple. A, a grocery list oftentimes is overlooked though. 
So especially we get in the routine of buying the same things every time. So this may lead up to overstocking on something that you end up just throwing out like spring mix, mm -hmm. I throw away spring mix all the time. Um, so taking the time to plan first before you shop, when you help, you, you know, help stay focused and ensure that you're getting what you need. Great way is to write a list by writing out proteins, veggies, fruits, and starchy carbs on the little separate categories there. And well as, you know, miscellaneous things that, that might be go-to snacks there. So um, yeah, breaking it out definitely helps you out. And just having a visual is helpful versus trying to remember it all up here. I'm not very good about that. So having it written down really helps me. Yeah. Uh, step number four, go grocery shopping. You actually have to go out there and do it and not just um, keep an empty fridge because obviously empty fridge means well, you don't have anything at home to cook with and you're going to go to something convenient like ordering food. Um, this seems like it's obvious maybe, but uh, now we are fully ready to hit the aisle with the list in hand. First pro tip, stick to the list. Stick to the list. Yep. Don't ignore it. Second pro tip, don't go shopping while you are hungry. I've done that way too many times. <laughs> you get way too many bags of chips and cookies that are bought just because my stomach is empty. So to stay focused on your list, try to stick to the perimeter of the store, avoiding those center aisles that have all the junk food and the chips and the and the crackers and the cookies you don't need. Um, on the a perimeter, you agree? <laughs> um, you'll find the meat and the whole foods, the fruits, the veggies, the dairy, you'll find all that on the outside or the perimeter of the store. So before you add it to your grocery cart, be sure to take a look at the nutrition label. So here's a common mistake, not looking at the label to make sure it's an informed choice. Have you ever wondered why certain foods or snacks have that packaging placing in the store and certain health claims? There's huge marketing involved here. Uh, because there are people that make a whole lot of money to create eye-catching products that encourage you to buy them. And I'm all about like something shiny, something's colorful. I definitely will gravitate towards that. Yeah, it's, it's no joke. I do. Um, this has to do with the colors, the placing, and just about everything else about the product. And we don't even realize it. This gets even worse with the confusing health claims that may persuade you to add something to your cart. Here's a great example you see as a label that says reduce sugar. At first, this may seem like a healthy choice because it has reduced sugar, but this claim is just saying that it's 25% less than the original. Still has a lot of sugar that you don't need. So if this is a strawberry pop tart, the original has 30 grams of sugar per package, meaning the reduced sugar would have about 23 grams of sugar. Still like, a whole serving or over serving of sugar you have for the day. The recommended amount of sugar per day is about 24 grams for women and no more than 36 grams per day for men. That is nearly a full day's worth of sugar packed into that little pop tart, even though it's called reduced. Mm. Mm. So, so what else do you want to say about the nutrition label? Yeah, well, how do you read a nutrition label, right? That's uh, it, that's a really good question and it's a very useful skill. So first thing I want you to do is look at the serving information. All of the following information is based upon that one serving. Did you know that a serving of ice cream is only about half a cup, not the entire pint? So let's get back to understanding proper portions as in step one, right? Next, look at how many calories are in that serving. This is gonna tell you how much energy you will be getting from the food because calories are just providing energy to your body. They're not good or bad, okay? Mm -hmm. Next, we wanna take a look at the details starting with the saturated fat, sodium, and added sugars. We want to find products that are minimally processed, which will be lower in all three. You'll also find micronutrients like vitamin D, calcium, iron, and more. Look at the percentage of the daily value. This is the percentage of daily value for each nutrient of the food. 
This will kind of help you understand if the product is good for a certain micronutrient or if it's high in fat or another macronutrient. So I'll leave you with this pro tip regarding reading labels. When looking at the ingredients list that are listed in order of abundance, if corn syrup is the first or second ingredient, Ooh. that means it has more sugar than anything else and just don't buy it. Even if it's the third ingredient, just don't buy corn syrup, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. even just looking at the top three ingredients alone is gonna give you a really good read of whether that food is okay for you or They're not. They're sneaky. Yeah. So step number five, Take it away with meal prepping. Yep. How many times have you gotten all the food, but then it goes bad in the fridge? We've all done that to some point. I definitely have. Maybe more than we would like to admit. A great pro tip is blocking out time after you shop to prep your meals. And we've talked about this briefly um, in some of the other talks. Getting that extra step of cutting, washing, prepping is going to make it the food that you just got really motivated to buy more useful, helpful, and ready to go. Once you get back home, if you block out an hour to bring everything in and just dive right into that prepping and the meals, the snacks, whatever it may be that you've planned and you get the crock pot ready for the pulled pork or chicken and get that oven started for the egg muffins and start rinsing and chopping your fruits and your veggies um, it's going to make it so much convenient for you, more convenient for you, uh, than just buying those processed pre-packaged foods. And honestly, it's cheaper than buying, um, pre-packaged stuff that's already chopped up. If you just have enough time, again, a half hour, half or hour to do it yourself. Um, they always charge less for the whole foods than the already pre-cut packaged ones. Yeah. Yeah. And, and remember timing is everything. You wouldn't plan to make two crock pot meals if you only had one crock pot, right? So be sure to plan for the foods that you can make all simultaneously to become the most efficient, right? This is where a lot of people like it takes so much time. So if we can be more efficient with it. So here's an example. Mm -hmm. Let's start pulled chicken, 10 minutes prep, four hours cooking, right? Then number two, we're going to cut our veggies for the egg muffins and start the oven. Then we're gonna bake the egg muffins for 25 minutes. While those are in the oven, get the stove heating to make the egg roll in a bowl. Oh, one of my favorites. And that takes no more than 15 minutes. So as everything is fishing up, finishing up on their cooking times, go back, finish rinsing, chopping, and portioning out all those fruits and veggies for the week. So be sure to place them in the front and center of the fridge. Not Don't hide them in the back, front and center. And that's going to remind you and everyone in the house to reach for those first. So if you need a variety throughout the week, find different sauces or seasoning to add as well as different complementing sides to help feel as though you're eating a variety of foods and flavors each day. For example, if I make the pulled chicken in the crock pot on Monday, I may add to that brown rice with roasted broccoli. Tuesday, I may turn that into a chicken taco or fajita. Oh, those are veggies. my favorite, tacos and fajitas. Yeah. Wednesday, I may add this to a wrap. And Thursday, maybe it goes in a soup or a casserole. So you can see there's five easy ways to get the same ground turkey throughout the week. So Jan and I really want you to be excited about the foods you're eating because no one wants to eat boring foods forever and ever. So love your food while saving time, reducing waste, and incorporating variety. Yeah, and sometimes just changing the seasoning can be helpful. You know, use uh, lemon pepper one day, then use like a chipotle seasoning another day. Um, there can be great ways that um, to change how you eat what you eat without actually having to change the ingredients other than just a little bit of seasoning or salt or pepper. Yeah, so if you want more meal prep tips and tricks, check out episode 16 of uh, Nicole's Nutrition Made Simple podcast. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this yet, you're, you're missing out. This is um, just a gold mine of uh, nutrition information and 
So episode 16, meal prep. Yep. There's okay. a lot of helpful information on there. Just check one out. And if you like it, you can scroll through and see which other ones you like. Okay. All right. At this point, we're going to start going over some, some principles that we talk about a lot here. And with all the misinformation out there, we know this can feel overwhelming. So to start building your foundation, here are some principles that have helped so many people take control of their health one habit at a time. So number one, add more whole foods to your diet. Yep. If you start choosing whole food options and less processed food packed with sodium, fat, and sugar, a simple way to do this is to start with reshaping your plate as we've talked about the plate method. I know it seems simple. We keep repeating it, but it's because it works and it's helpful. So it's a half plate of non-starchy veggies with a fourth of lean protein and a fourth of starchy carbs and mindful of healthy fats. Again, like avocado mm. or uh, I have you know olive oil, staying away from those um, more highly um, saturated fats. And remember yeah. to add these components to your grocery list so you actually have them available. All right, we got some uh, FAQ items, right? Um, what should I eat around my workout, right? Mm -hmm. So we want to um, make sure that we're getting some protein, we're getting some carbs um, in here as well. During your workouts, you want to lower down with the fats a little bit. Save those for the windows outside of your workouts. Especially if you're having like whey protein, you want to do it within 30 minutes to an hour before or after your workouts because it's going to absorb quickly and you want it to be used while your muscles are recovering. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Let's go back to ECN principle number two, focus on balance. Mm -hmm. When we say balance, we mean does every meal and snack you consume throughout the day contain carb, protein, and fat? Pairing each meal and snack with all three of these macronutrients will keep you full for longer. Yeah. How many times have you had a snack and like 10 minutes later, you're still hungry? Yeah. Especially like carbs are usually so easy to pick for a snack. But being conscientious that you can add something else to that. Be good. Yeah, that's, that's why. It wasn't a balanced snack. All right, everybody's favorite. Principle number three, limit the amount of sugar you consume daily. Right? The, the, we recommend no more than six teaspoons for women and nine for men. Um, the average con person consumes 150 pounds of sugar per year. 46 teaspoons per day instead of six and nine it's 46 teaspoons per day so it's not really surprising sugar's super addictive and it's hidden in everything absolutely everything all right so let's go through i think we got some of these slides out of order here uh apologize for that that was my mistake um faq i don't love veggies we've heard this one before what do we do about that, Jana? And we lost Jana. She, she bowed out. Anyway, so if you don't love veggies, um, you may just have found not found veggies that, that you like. So definitely try different things. Try cooking them in different ways. And there are also ways to sneak them into food um, with egg muffins or meatloaf muffins or things like that. All right, next question we get a lot is, where should I start? And this is a fantastic question. Start with one thing at a time. Maybe it's something you already have in mind, or maybe it is one of the things that we discussed today. But the best and fastest way to reach your goals is one at a time, one thing at a time. And that's why when we work with someone one-on-one -on -one, uh, through our nutrition coaching program, we build that individual plan for you. So we work on whatever habit that you need to do, just one at a time. If you stack them all together, uh, it doesn't start set you up for success. So, all right. So 
here's the deal. It has never been a more perfect time to get started. I think we're getting Jana back here. So um, if you're looking into taking this to the next level, um, you kind of have to make a commitment to yourself. It's simple, but it's not easy. And that's why we're here to help you. We all kind of know what to eat, but you know, it's not easy to do and implement. So if you're thinking, this all sounds really great, but I don't even know where to start. It's overwhelming. I just need someone to help me create a plan that's realistic. And here's the big thing, someone to hope, help me accountable. We would love to help you. So again, our nutrition program is backed by Healthy Steps Nutrition. They have helped over 30,000 people and we're doing the same here. So um, these are just, you know, here's a few more examples of some success stories. These guys are awesome. So who wants to be the next success story? And if you're looking for more options, definitely, we said it again a few slides ago, check out the Nutrition Made Simple podcast. Okay. So I think that's all we got. I don't know what happened to Jana. We lost her, but uh, she's on vacation and that's okay. Glad she joined. You. There she's back. Looks like. Sorry about that. Joined I us didn't on her phone. My charger. <laughs> computer. Can you hear me fine? Yeah, we're good. We're good. I, 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 I wrapped it up for everybody, but. Uh, Wonderful. Just wanted to say though, I'm totally excited to help you continue your journey. If you are still interested in stacking some more healthy habits and tailorizing, like making them tailor and customized to your personal goals. Um, so if you have any questions about it, feel free to ask myself or Mike when you're at the gym or send us a message. Uh, it doesn't have to stop here. I think some of you guys have made some really awesome progress and I would love to see you continue that. And I am totally available to be your accountability partner as your nutrition coach if you want to continue. Fantastic. So hope you guys all took a lot from this nutrition talk today. Uh, this one's been my favorite so far, uh, you know, because we all struggle with meal prep and we end up avoiding it, right? Because we mm -hmm. think we need to eat the same thing every single day or spend all day in the kitchen. And hopefully we prove those myths wrong. So with these five steps, hopefully you can feel confident and set yourself up for success. So again, thanks for spending time with us watching this. And if you're looking for additional help and want to continue on and dive into your nutrition to reach those short and long-term goals, um, definitely reach out to us. We can uh, get you going on that. So I'm Mike, yeah. that's Jana, and uh, we will see you guys around.